Hello, my name is John. Thank you for watching another video on Archimatics. Today I'd like to talk about relations or how you can bind different parameters together with expressions in the graph view. So far all the topics that we've covered come from the Archimatics user's guide and we've been following those topics pretty accurately. Today we will finish the topics in the user's guide but Archimatics contains so much more that hasn't been covered. I will also give you further tips and tricks and explore some other features that Archimatics has. For example, today I would like to introduce you to a prefab instancer node, which you can use to bring in any model from Unity or Maya or 3D Studio Max and use it within the node graph of Archimatics. So let's get right into it. First, let's talk about relations. I have an empty Unity scene with Archimatics loaded. By relations, we mean setting up a relationship between the parameters of different nodes. To illustrate this, let's start with a cube and a cylinder. I will create a cube and a cylinder from the library. Let's move the cylinder aside and I will reduce the bevel on it so the edges are nice and sharp. Now let's expand the controls on each node to see what kind of parameters are available to us. I'm going to create a relationship between the height of these parameters. So I will click on the height output of the cube and attach it to the height input of the cylinder. Relations in Archimatics work two ways. That means if I drag the height of the cylinder, the height of the cube will correspond to that. But likewise, if I drag the height of the cube, the height of the cylinder will also be changed. You can see the relationship by clicking on the orange line between the two parameters. In the bottom, it will show you two lines. One is an equation for the cylinder height, and one is an equation for the box height. Currently, they equal each other. However, if I change one of them, for example, I will set the cylinder height to the box height times 2 and click Save. Then, if I change the height of the cube, the cylinder will be twice as tall. But if I change the height of the cylinder, the cube will be exactly as tall. That's because we have two different equations for the two objects. The parameter for the cylinder is twice the box height, but the parameter for box height is only one times the cylinder height. That's why if we change the box, the cylinder will be twice as tall, but if we change the cylinder, the box will be the same height as the cylinder. The parameters that you relate with expressions don't have to be matching. I don't need to relate the height of one object to the height of another. Let us delete this expression. I'll click the delete button in the bottom and relate the height of the cube to another control of the cylinder, perhaps under transform. I will select the translate y, which is how high the cylinder is above the ground. So let's connect the height of the cube to the translate y parameter of the cylinder. Now if I move the height of the cube, it drives now how high the cylinder will be off the ground. So now you can make sure that the upper floor of your building always starts where your lower floor ends. If I move the cylinder up and down, it will change the height of the cube. Now let's take a look at the prefab instancer node. For this example, I brought in a model from Maya which I want to use as a part of my building. I want to use it in Archimatics together with the plan repeater node so I can repeat it multiple times around the plan of the building. For the floor plan, today I'll just use a simple rectangle, although you can use any shape or combination of shapes that you want. Now I'm going to extrude the floor plan to create the walls. And let's set them to 4 meters tall. 
and I'll click on back facing so we can see inside. Let's make the room a little bit larger first. Now let's connect the plan to a plan repeater plan node. The plan repeater node will accept some meshes as inputs. To plug in our custom mesh, we first have to create a prefab instancer node. There is a field here to plug in your mesh, just like you would plug in a material, for example. You can drag in the prefab, or you can select it using the little circle to the right of the field. Now connect it to the cell mesh input of the plan repeater node. What happened here is my original mesh is way too large because my units from Maya didn't match my units in Unity. I will expand my transforms for the prefab instance node and adjust my scale to match the scene. Looks like I have to adjust my rotation too. That looks better, but my mesh is repeated much too often. Let's reduce the density. To do that, I'm going to adjust the bay width of my plan repeater node. The bays still look pretty sparse, so I'll bring them a bit closer together. That's better. I'll assign the walls a material. I can do that because they are a parametric object within Archimatics. Changing the material of the plan repeater node will have no effect on the mesh that I brought in from Maya because the mesh is not a parametric object. To change my custom mesh material, I have to change the material that I assigned to it and that's in my materials folder. So that's how you can use the prefab instancer node to bring in your own geometry from Maya, 3D Studio Max, Blender, or any other 3D application that you use to create your 3D models. Now we have covered all the topics that were detailed in the user's guide, but there are plenty of other aspects to Archimatics which we haven't even touched yet. Next I would like to make some videos about how to put the skills that we learned to practical use. I'm going to create some separate playlists for different projects. First I would like to make a European style building, perhaps four or five stories tall and with different architectural elements on different floors. I hope you will subscribe and join me again as we put Archimatics to some practical use. See you in the next video.